This is a tutorial on how to use the Texas Instruments TI-84 Plus C E model of graphics calculator to find integral and non-integral probabilities of a normal distribution. First of all, let's quickly have a look at what that actually means in terms of our graph. So if we have a normal distribution that looks something like this, we do know that 99.7% of the data does fit within three standard deviations. We also know that if it's perfectly normally distributed, that the mean will be in the middle here. Let's, for the purpose of this video, pretend that I'm baking cookies, and this graph represents the number of chalk chips on each cookie. And the mean here we'll say is 12, and it has a standard deviation which is equal to 2.2. And let's pretend that we're aiming for each cookie to have between 8 and 14 chalk chips. What we're essentially trying to do is we're trying to work out how many of the cookies are going to be between this 8 here and the 14, which would approximately be in here. Well, to be able to do that, we would first need to be able to calculate the probability of each cookie falling between these ranges. And when we're calculating probability using a normal distribution, we're actually calculating the area that is inside of what we've just stated. So if we were to calculate the probability that our cookie, which I'm just gonna use X to represent, is between eight and 12, we would find the chance of any individual cookie falling between this region of our graph. All right, so let's now enter this into our calculator. To do that, just make sure your calculator is on. And we wanna to go to the distribution section, which is above the VARS button. So we go to second, distribution. And the one that we want is normal CDF, which is option two. So you can scroll down and press enter and it'll ask us for the lower and upper bound. The lower and upper bound is represented in here, this one being our lower, this one being our upper. So our lower is eight, our upper is 14. Then we'll ask for our mean, which here is 12, and our standard deviation, which here is 2.2. .2. And we hit the paste and we'll put it into our run screen. Now we hit the enter again and it'll give us the probability of it falling between these two values, which is also the area underneath this graph. So our probability is approximately equal to 0.78. What that means is there's approximately a 78% chance of each cookie having between eight and 14 chalk chips on there. But let's say that I wanted to make sure that I had at least six chalk chip cookies on there. So what I want to know is what is the chance of getting less than six? So six would probably be approximately here on my graph. I want to know what the area is inside of this in black. So the probability that my X value is less than six. Now to enter this into your calculator, you go back into the distribution CDF function, so normal CDF, as we did before. But we now need to change the lower function, and we need to change the lower function to a really, really small number. Now to do this, we usually go negative one to the E, which is that value above the divide sign, so you go second E to the 99. And what that indicates is it's infinitely negative inside of our calculator. Our upper bound is the six. We don't want it to go any higher than the six, so we put our six in. Our mean and our standard deviation are the same, so we paste that in and then hit the enter. And it will tell us that the probability is approximately equal to 0.0032. So the key thing is, if we're dealing with a probability that's got no lower limit, and the same thing for an upper limit, we need to put into our calculator a value that's really, really small, or a value that's really, really large. For example, if I want to know the chance of getting one that's higher than 14 here, so this area in here, I'd be looking at the probability that my x is greater 
than 14. To enter that, I'd go to my second, my distribution, go to my normal CDF. My lower here is gonna be 14, but my upper needs to be a really large number. So we do the opposite to what we did before. Before we did negative one, E99, this time we're gonna do positive one. So one, second, E99, which is a really large number. So it's telling this calculator that it's infinitely large. Our mean standard deviation remain the same. So when we paste that through, it will give us a probability of approximately 0.18. So in order to calculate the probabilities underneath a normal distribution, you need a few pieces of information. The first thing you need to be able to identify is the mean and the standard deviation. Then you need to know what the lower and upper limits are on your graph. If there is no lower limit, we put into our calculator negative one e to the 99, which is a really, really small number. If there is no upper limit, then we put a positive one e to the 99, which is a really, really large number.